Hello everyone, so I am Mohit Agarwal and this is a session on how to use parser asset and what is the parser asset. So the agenda will be to cover the introduction to parser asset, what are some of the features of parser asset, configuration steps, how you can configure a parser asset according to your use case and how can we use dictionary and regular expressions for configuring it. Then we will be covering a small demo on how to use it, how to create the parser and how to add the steps for dictionary and regular expressions and then we will cover a small use case. And then we will share the feedback link. <coughs> so introduction, what is parser asset? So parser is a transformation in CDQ which will help us identify discrete values in an input field <clears throat> and then we can write those values to different output fields so for example you have a string which will contain email address phone number everything in a single row and you will need to divide this and you will need to move them in separate columns as per your use case for example uh, you want email in a separate column and phone number in a separate column but it is coming as a part of a single line for example the customer has one field address in that address field the field address as well as the contact number and you want to separate them into different fields so then you can use this parser asset to identify each values using some pattern some dictionary or regular expressions and then you can uh, move them to different fields accordingly <coughs> and as we said, it enhances data quality by parsing and standardizing input data. So, as you can see, uh, the input column will contain multiple data, but you can standardize it according to your use case and you can uh, separate the fields. <coughs> so, the features, as I said, data cleansing, it will remove any incorrect or inaccurate data entries. So, example, the input row can contain multiple data but it will only feed those data to the output rows which will match the pattern or we can say which will uh, be accepted as correct entries you can create certain rules for that uh, to define what is a correct or valid entry and then it will only feed those entries and it will ignore all the invalid entries and as I said it will pass the data according to regular expressions or you can also create uh, create custom dictionaries for example uh, for names, series, countries we cannot create regular expressions and we will need dictionaries and based on that predefined rules it will validate the data <coughs> so let's move on to the configuration part how can we configure a parser asset simple you can land on the CDQ chiclet in the IACS and then there you will see the option to create a parse asset you define the name of the asset the description and then you can add the steps so each parsing step will parse one kind of pattern for data so you can use multiple parsing steps if you want to parse multiple data and you can use dictionaries or regular expressions and then you can uh, parse uh, use text to pass the logic, uh, sorry, uh, to test the logic, you can use the testing field and then you can give sample inputs and verify if it is working correctly or not. Dictionary, as I said, you can use dictionary or regular expressions. <coughs> so you can add one step for dictionary. <coughs> sorry. So for example, if you have a name input and you want to identify correct names, so what you can do is you can have a dictionary of the first names and a dictionary for the last name or a better example will be country so you have a list of all the countries and you need to match if the country input is valid or invalid so you can add a rule which will match the input with the dictionary and if the value is present in the dictionary only then it will be considered valid or else it will be invalid and then you can define multiple steps and you can also choose the sequence of the steps for following and then uh, the output you can define various field uh, for the outputs and you can redirect each output to the desired fields <coughs> similarly you can do for the regular expressions for regular expressions you do not need to create a regular expression always because for most of the general basic use cases we already have a range of regular expressions pre-built and sent so for example for phone numbers or for email addresses or social security number anything we already have pre-built regular expressions which you can use uh, so for example if you have a custom use case which is not present you can still create your own regular expressions and then you can uh, use that regular expression instead so we'll cover this use case as an example in the coming demo 
so the row contains phone number and email address like i said and we need to segregate the phone number and email into a different fields so let's see all this including the configurations in the demo so here we are in a data quality checklet so click on parse so now you can give any name and description choose your location where you want to save it now in the configuration field <clears throat> there are two mode custom and prebuilt so the prebuilt is basically to compare your string to a prebuilt data pattern right now the prebuilt data pattern supports name so what it will do is it will take one particular string and it will uh, take any locale as you wish for example you want to compare some names of the let's say united kingdoms and then it will you can choose the format in which you want it to be identified so first name middle name last name or last name first name middle name or anything so i'll choose the first name middle name last name and then what you can do is you can give input you can choose any one of the runtime environment and you can test it <coughs> so now as you can see it took my name <coughs> and it already identified the first name the last name and the full name so uh it also identifies what is the label name for example for me the middle name was skipped Uh, and even though it was in the format it recognized that the middle name is not there and it clearly says that the label name is first name space last name and the tokenized data so this is how you can use the prebuilt model now let's proceed to the custom model so in custom model you can define past steps So what are past step? Past step uh, understand it kind of like rule logics. So you can define multiple rule logic as per you want. So every rule logic will contain a uh, regular expression or a dictionary. So for example, if you want to identify uh, address or let's say driving license number or social security number or phone number, so you can use regular expressions. For example you want to identify first name last name countries cities all the predefined values you can use dictionary so for now let's give each one a try starting with the regular expression so uh, in the regular expression i have two option built in and custom so built in will give me a list of predefined regular expressions provided by informatica and it will cover a diverse range of expression recognitions for example let's see what all things we have for india it contains post code indian date format indian license plate number passport number post code number company identification number any bank ifsc code in india and indian phone number so let us start with the phone number let's say i want to have a particular uh, output which will contain all the valid phone number from a set of inputs so here i can choose the indian phone number the regular expression as you can see is prebuilt and i can select any one of the output so i am creating output here name phone <coughs> now let's test it so i can give some inputs for example plus 91 1 2 3 or let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 or let's say plus 8 1 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can also use zero, zero, and then space nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, zero. 
so let's see which all this identifies as a indian phone number so as you can see uh, even if we write the country code but it's not 10 digit it will go unpassed even if it is only numbers it will go unpassed if it has a different country code and has 10 digits it will go unpassed and if even if it has zero in front but has only nine digit it will go unpassed but if we have everything in the correct pattern uh, like with country code and 10 digit it is passed as phone and even if we don't have the country code right in india we can write zero instead of country code even then it will identify it as a phone number so now as you can see all these output will go to the phone field now let's try to add one using dictionary so for dictionary you need to create a dictionary and as you can see i have created one dictionary which contains a department why uh, like all the departments of a company so for example here i have introduced the departments gcs finance facilities payroll hr so now i will use this dictionary here go to select and choose your dictionary name choose one output so here i'll create name output I can choose if it is case sensitive or not. Here, I don't want to choose it uh, to be case case sensitive. And standardization, replace matches with valid values. So, if I choose this, if it is a near match, and it has something valid in the dictionary which is almost same to the match, it will replace it with the valid value. Just like uh, our autocorrect does when you are typing something let's say there is a word which is almost matching to the word we typed but our word has some inaccurate uh, spelling mistake or something like that it will automatically correct it with the original word so standardization does something like that so along with the dictionaries uh, i have gcs there and even i can have two values in a single uh, for example i have kind of this value which has the department as well as the country code or the phone number so let's test it So as you can see, <coughs> if I have the correct department name, it will identify it. Let's say if we have a field which contains both department and the phone number, it will identify both. And if the department name is incorrect, it will go unparsed. So this is how you use a uh, parser transformation. Uh, here as you can see, I have made this parser test and I have used two built-in regular expressions because we have regular expression for most of the use cases one regular expression i have put for email and the other i have output created an output called email and for second field second step what i have done is i have uh, i have created a regular expression uh, sorry i have used a pre-built regular expression for indian phone number and i have created an output field phone and it will redirect the phone number to the phone field now i have these example where one contain a valid email address but not a valid phone number one contain a valid phone number as well as a valid email address let's again use one thing one which will contain a valid email uh, valid phone number
but an invalid email address. So as you can see from the test, uh, it identifies that it is a valid email but not a valid phone number. It identifies it has both a valid email address and a phone number and it also identifies this is a valid phone number but not a valid email address. Okay, so now what you can do is you can use this information and maybe you can create a rule specification which will see if the email address and phone number both are present only email number email address is present only phone number is present or none of them are present and accordingly you can decide what to do with the data so this is one such example of how you can use parse in real life so that was the parser asset in the demo and thank you for your time we would love to hear from you please reach out to us with any feedback you have or anything you have to say on support videos at informatica.com or you can also contact us on the twitter account infosupport with infa in caps thank you so much